to Middleware Friday, episode 55, March 2nd, 2018. Working with dates and currencies in Logic Apps. So in this episode, I'd like to talk a little bit more about how you would handle dates and currencies in a Logic App. And there's also community content in this episode, a blog by Justin Yu from Mexia. So if you deal with dates, whether that be where you're already um, familiar with uh, when you're building applications using either uh, .NET or any other language, you will deal, deal, deal with format or uh, local time um, based on time zones where you are, maybe file time or the time, at the time on your operating system. Maybe you're dealing with uh, Unix time, so you're getting a message from a different platform that's being sent to you in a Unix time uh, format, or maybe you have to deal with the UTC time, or perhaps you're parsing um, an Excel sheet which has dates in there and then it will be changed to what's an OLA dated embedded format. I was dealing that uh, recently, so the date gets uh, transfer, uh, transformed into a number and then you have to parse that back into date time when you uh, want to deal with that data again, or maybe insert it into a data store like a SQL Server, for instance. And in general, you deal with conversions um, going from one format to the other, maybe using um, different types of format, and you probably are familiar with that. And you can experience that too when you're dealing with dates and logic apps. And then there are currencies. So I found it interesting too that you can deal with different types of currencies, uh, for instance, in your logic app. So you can might, be, might have to convert um, dollars to euros or maybe vice versa. And then there's the format of your currency. Do you round it up or are you placing digits behind the number? And then there's something like the symbol. Um, so you have the amount on one end, but you know what type of amount is it? So you could have a symbol for your currencies. So dollar is USD. Euro is EUR. So those type of things um, can be there as well. Or the symbol could be just a dollar sign or a euro sign. And then in general, the data type for your currencies. Um, and this can be um, in .NET, the best data type for it is, is um, double. Um, if you're in Excel, you could have currency um, symbols in there. And you have to, to deal with that too. So you might have to convert it to a string first and then get the symbol out of it, and then the amount itself, get it, get that out of it, and then maybe convert that to a double. A double is the most suitable data type, data type for currencies. So if you look at scenarios now, and this is more like geared towards um, uh, logic apps. Uh, imagine you have a logic app and you get an order message in, and you might have to add, enrich that order by adding a timestamp or maybe the, there's already an amount in there in euros and maybe you have to add different uh, amounts to it in different currencies, perhaps. So you want to match your order in that manner. Or it could be that you're getting a message and you need to convert the time to make it more suitable for the backend system, whether it be an on-premise system, Oracle, SAP, or whether it be um, cloud systems. And you can even have um, SAP or Oracle inside the cloud. Or maybe it's a SaaS solution that needs to have the time in a certain format. And the same will account for currencies where you might have to convert euros into dollars because the system can only deal with dollars. Or maybe there's a third party vendor you're talking to and it also um, and it has a SaaS solution or a solution in general and wants to have the currencies maybe in a certain format or maybe also in, from euros and in dollars or, or <clears throat> any other type of requirement. So those types of scenarios could be there where within your integration in your Logic App, you need to manipulate those currencies and time or dates. So for this, I've created a demo to make this a little bit more tangible and explain a little bit more how you could potentially deal with dates and currencies in a Logic App. So here's a, a logic app I've created that would receive um, an HTTP request, a message, and I'm taking the currency symbol out of it. So because I want to know what the rate is for, for instance, a dollar to euro. And for this, I will create a input message and send that out to the function. The function will get the input and 
give me the rate back and the rate is being parsed here because I'm using it for an expression. So there's an expression here, one for converting the time to UTC in a certain format. So you can use an expression for it. And there's also for the price, I'm, sorry, let me just, for the price, what I'm doing is I'm getting, let me enlarge this a bit for you. So this is the order price. And what I'm doing is that I am taking the output rates and then the US dollar rate. So the US dollar is divided by the rate. So the, the USD to dollar rate. And this is being given back as a response. So what I'm using in general to um, get the um, currency is that I'm using an API within the um, function, which I'll show you in a minute. And what I'm saying is, okay, I want to know uh, based on Euro, what the amount of USDs I would get for one Euro. And this is the message I'm sending to the logic app which I've just shown you. And here you can see that the date is being changed to UTC. And this is the amount in euros. And the amount in, in dollars was 1500 or 1499. So this is what I've done inside my um, logic app. And what I also could do is create a function that would change the time. So instead of using an expression inside a logic app, I in the logic app get the date and then send the date to a function and then based on a certain time zone, give me the, uh, the time back. So if I put in here Singapore standard time, then based on this, I'm getting back that it's plus eight hours compared to this time. And I can also take Greenland, for instance. Do it again. Paste it, send it, and it's minus three. So if I go to this function, so let me see if I'm getting to correct. So this is the time zone converter function. And as you can see, I'm giving it a date. and a time zone and it will convert that based on the time zone by ID, convert the time and then give me that back. So this is being called also from the logic app, the second logic app. So let me go to the second log logic app for you. So this is process order two. So here I'm not using any built-in expressions. I'm only using, I'm calling two functions. So one to convert the currencies from Euro to, or from dollars to Euro, and the time zone converter. So this is just how the logic app looks like. So this is where it's calling those functions. So if I, Go to and call this logic app. Then what I've done, as in a time zone, but in the, in the logic app itself, I just apply to that the time zone is um, Western Europe, and then based on the date, I'm giving it plus one hour. Service book order price in euros again just to give it a little bit of a sense. So I'm just giving here the order date, but based on that, um, and it, by default it's 12 o'clock, so it will just get the GMT time, and then based on the time zone, it just adds one hour to it. So here I'm just calling through the logic app two functions, or as I showed you also, you could use the built-in expressions in the logic app. So there's two ways of of doing this. 
Okay, so in the demo you've seen, you saw me um, calling logic apps that would either, now there's one function in general in both cases that would call the currency rate for euro to USDs. One euro and getting almost $1.25. Sorry, I worked a little bit with that within my logic app or by converting kind of the euro into a USD and provide that back to the caller using Postman. Or I could entirely just use um, functions and not using any built-in expressions. So I've done both a little bit. Now there's some consideration in those approach. So it could be performance wise that you choose to keep everything within a logic app, or maybe just not calling any outside uh, function to do your con uh, conversion. So maybe upfront you load all the um, con uh, currencies and then not calling any other functions so you could um, speed it up a little bit. It's also about control. Um, so you get a little bit more control using a function than using the built-in expressions in a logic app. And then it's also something like complexity. How complex do you want to build up your solution? When you want to do callouts from your logic app to all kinds of functions, and then of course that will build up and make it a little bit more complex, or would you confine everything into one logic app in general? So those are kind of the approaches you have to think about in general when you're doing logic apps and functions together. But as you can see, there, there's multiple possibilities when it comes to converting dates and, and currencies. But you get a little bit more control and versatility if you would use functions um, with regards to dates and currencies. You can build up a whole library of functions with regards to um, converting dates and also um, currencies. Now this community content, um, I like to talk a little bit about a blog post that was created by uh, Justin Yu from the Mexia guys in Australia. So they've got a company blog and you can find some good um, blogs around logic apps and some other capabilities in Azure. So definitely worth checking out. And also this one talks about how to convert UTC to local time via functions and logic apps. And he found something interesting that the um, it built an expression of the logic app wasn't really that accurate or wasn't giving back the time he envisioned or thought that would be given back. So he's using a function as well, he's using his dot and .NET Core also. And there he got a little bit more precise um, the time back he was expecting. So he's using the West Australia time zone um, in his blog post. So definitely worth checking out um, with regards to um, date times. So if you got any feedback, um, please do keep them coming um, through Twitter or through the middle of Friday. Um, if you want to do a guest recording, so if you got a cool demo, um, please record it and send it to us and we could build a session or an episode around it. Mm -hmm. Well, you be the star of the episode instead of us doing it. So definitely if you want to have something cool with regards to integration um, and you want to have this, you know, broadcasted through middle of Friday, then please do so. Okay, again, if you're watching this video uh, or episode, then we're getting close to the Global Integration Guru Bootcamp. So I've, I've mentioned this before. Um, when you watch it, uh, it will be about three weeks um, apart from it, and the Global Integration Bootcamp will begin. So there's several um, locations out there in the United States, in Europe, in Australia. So please sign them up, uh, sign up through Eventbrite and those sites if you're nearby, so you can really follow through. And there will be a different type of agendas. There's labs being prepared as labs already being finished by some of our guys uh, in the board. So definitely interesting uh, labs around uh, logic apps um, in conjunction with uh, cognitive services, some IoT labs, um, some labs around, or at least, at least a lab around uh, the bot framework. So definitely some interesting stuff where you can uh, have some hands-on experience. And again, I'd like to uh, thank you for, for watching this episode and also uh, Bistop360 for being a, a great host. And um, in this um, episode, I'll leave you with the music credits. <laughs>